Hi all, the armchair artist here. Welcome to my channel. This is the painting of some blossom that I was going to do today, but unfortunately I deleted the movie, so I've got to do something else. In fact, this was the next painting I did. Again, it was blossom, um, but this one had a bee on it. Um, never done a bee before, so that was going to be a little bit interesting, to say the least. So... I left the bee till last because I was a bit frightened of doing it. So I thought I'd do everything else. I'll do the leaves and do the buds and flowers. Uh, and then I'll do the bee last. I can do it on a separate layer. And if it doesn't come out, I can always take it off and just have the flower. I'm working in Procreate today, as usual. The reason for that is it's the only app I've got. Um, I could get some other apps, I suppose, Taiyasui, Sketches, Art Rage and others that are probably very good. But I like Procreate and rather than try to confuse myself with lots of different apps, I want to try and use this to master any effects uh, that I need. I might try another app at a later date, but at the moment I'm very pleased with Procreate, so I'm going to stick with it. I'm using two brushes, um, a Jasonki inking brush and my usual favourite grunge brush. Those of you who have seen um, the few paintings that I've done so far will know that I mostly use a black background um, and this one's a bit different because I've gone for green. In fact, later on I'm going to change the background altogether uh, and try and make it something interesting. You may have noticed that um, I'm ignoring the bee for the time being. Well, that's because I thought I'd leave it till the end because I'm not sure how it's going to go. I've got flowers uh, uh, pretty well under the way and they're looking pretty good and the leaves are looking good. So if the worst comes to the worst and I don't like the bee, which I will do on a separate layer, I can always knock it on the head and delete it. So here we are now on the last flower, the open one. Um, I use the same method, in fact I use the same method for whether it's the flower or the leaves. And if you keep watching you'll notice that I do more or less everything in the same order. I lay down a basic tone, um, a mid-tone of whatever it is I'm painting, in this case the pink flower. So I'll go in with a, a pink tone uh, in the mid-range and then on top of that I will go in with a darker tone to, for the darker parts or the shadows if you like and then I'll go over the top of that with the lighter tone to create some highlights. Um, I might do a little bit of edging in white and I might smudge that a little bit but if you watch whatever I do whether it be in a bud, a leaf or a flower, a petal, whatever I use the same method for all of the work. Right, I couldn't put it off any longer, I had to get on with the bee. Uh, and to do that, I had to create my own stamp brush. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm a great believer in using a stamp brush for compositional purposes. Um, in this case, I needed one to give me a texture. There just wasn't a brush available in Procreate to uh, get the texture of a bee. I don't suppose it would be if you think about it. Anyhow, I decided to make my own brush um, by just drawing a few straight lines um, in a slight curve and that gave me the basics of the brush that I used to do all of the texture on the bee. Um, I did a, put in a light colour first as a background and then I went over it with various shades of brown, ochre and even went down as far as black on a low opacity to give me some sort of um, a shape to the bee because otherwise it would have looked very flat. Um, I started at the front end. The picture I took of the bee hadn't really got a defined eye on it so it looks a bit strange at the moment but a bit later on I do put an eye in even though I couldn't see it on the uh, photo, my reference photo that I took. By the way, the whole of this um, this painting is from a reference photo of a crab apple tree that we've got growing in the front garden. Um, it came out 
and I took a photograph of it and um, a couple of days later we it the blossom had gone the weather had gone that warm it just didn't didn't like it and uh, I was glad I got the photo really um, because it it's a beautiful sight when it's in full flower anyhow I digress you can see now that uh, the bee is taking shape I'm leaving the wings to last because again I don't know how to do wings and I didn't know whether to do the wings try to do the wings um, first and then put the colour of the body of the bee round them or do the body of the bee first and uh, put the wings on top and as you can see I did the latter I think it took as long to do this bee as it took me to do the rest of the painting altogether um, in fact it was proved to be quite a task getting the bands right was a was something in itself it looked simple when I looked at it on the photograph I thought well that's easy enough and it just do some bands of different couple of tones and Bob's your uncle but it didn't turn out like that I convinced myself that the bee was too long and it probably was so I chopped a bit off it then I had to redo some of the flower because the bee wasn't filling the whole of the space um, so it, it turned out to be quite hard work but I persevered and uh, I got there in the end thankfully I was doing this uh, bee using uh, digital media if I'd have been trying to do it in watercolour um, I doubt, don't really know what sort of a mess I would have made in fact I wouldn't have been able to do it because I changed it that many times I'd have just had a big soggy wet hole in the middle of the paper uh, and a load of mud because you just can't do that sort of thing um, using watercolours I suppose you can do it a little bit more in oils and acrylics but in watercolour it would be no good at all um, with digital you can change it as much as you like and uh, you can keep going till you get there in the end in fact if I was to go back to painting with traditional media now um, I'm sure I'd be have more idea because I've learnt such a lot while I've been doing this digital art there's no chance of me ever going back to traditional art by the way um, I've had enough of that malarkey to last me a lifetime I'm sticking with the digital because it allows me to create the images that I see in my mind um, and that's what it's all about it's not about trying to master the mixing of paints and and how much water to apply to the paper and all that stuff and I just want to get on and create pleasing images I hope that's what I'm doing anyhow they're pleasing to me so that's all that matters um, you may have also noticed by the way that there's some buds at the bottom I haven't done um, well I'm not doing them because I like the composition with the three the bee at the top and the buds at the bottom and the other bud on the top right hand side almost done now only those dreaded wings to put in um, they finished up being a lot simpler than I thought they would be it was just a matter of drawing around them in a bit of white and then um, put in a few light lines here and there and before you know it um, by altering the transparency um, the opacity of the brush I had a set of wings done um, once that was done the next thing was to do some scribbling and try and create some sort of a background which I did and there is the finished painting and there is a close up I hope you enjoyed that if you did um, please subscribe and there will be another video coming along shortly thank you very much